don't even have to get through the first word. <laughs> okay. I see. I want to listen to the whole song. Hi everyone. This is part of my Janis Joplin weekend and well, but it's a mystery because I know this song is by sung by Janis Joplin here in front of me, but I don't even have the title of the song. Vlad is keeping it completely under wraps and my challenge is to listen to the first part of it. He says I might recognize the song, perhaps from some other context because the composer is not Janis Joplin herself. Um, so maybe I know it from somewhere else. I don't know yet. And he thinks that I will be able to guess or sense the, the theme, the topic, the title of the song. He tells me it's because I, I live in the South. Well, okay, whatever that means, I don't know. I have no text in front of me. I have no score in front of me yet. And well, of course, by the time you see this recording, I will know what the song is. But in this moment, I don't know. And I'm a little bit nervous because what if I totally don't get it? What if I miss it? What if I, what if it's a complete flop as far as how well I can get into the song? But it's kind of fun. So I'm, I'm going to give it a try. We'll see what happens. That opening line sounds incredibly familiar. I can't place it right now. I'm continuing it as my mind wants it to go, as if I know it or something. But I can't place it. Oh boy. I'm going to listen again. Let's see. How does it make me feel? Something related to the South. For some reason, it's not really taking me South, but da, 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 da. I'm still, I'm still, oh, I've got this thing in my mind about what is that from? I, it sounds incredibly familiar and, and I'm, I'm struggling to rein myself in and think about how does it make me feel because that is bothering me that I can't place it right now. <laughs> I'm going to listen one more time. Listen one more time, no problem. Take your time.
This is harder than I expected. <laughs> It's incredibly beautiful. It feels like a breeze. Like a, a, a warm breeze. Maybe in the autumn? I don't know. I'm not sure about season. But it feels like a warm breeze. kind of running through my hair and across my face a bit. Um, am I going somewhere or am I sitting somewhere? I feel like I'm not really traveling anywhere. The two voices, the two guitars playing this, one after the other, kind of makes me feel like I'm watching something there's some motion I'm watching something happen or or um Vlad's behind the camera and he's just sitting on pins and needles hoping I will get this I, I don't know if I will get this uh, Come on, you're so close forget about the music remember you have to transcend the music. A, a good music is not for itself. A I good know music that. is to give you something else. I know that. So forget about the instruments and the voices and the... I know that. How does it feel on you? In song. Listen again. Okay, I will listen again. It's warm. There's a breeze. I know that much. I feel that much. Um, I, I don't know what I'm missing. This is terrible. <laughs> okay, listen to it. Okay. Start from the beginning and let it go until after the first word. Okay, and then I stop it? Then you stop it because you will know. have to get through the first word <laughs> okay I see I want to listen to the whole song <laughs> who's the composer summertime is that Gershwin yes that's Gershwin that's Gershwin Okay, okay, okay. Okay, now you can read Finding the text. Finding my way a little <laughs> bit at a time. <laughs> you can read the text and you can have the score. Okay. Let me read the text now. While I'm pulling it up, let me um, just tell you that if you want more 
uh, videos ahead of their release or if you want exclusive access to videos that can't go public, you can always check out my coffee and Patreon. All right, here we are. Summertime from Porgy and Bess. Originally, in fact, when I said George, was it Gershwin? The first, the first thing that popped into my mind was Porgy and Bess. And that's why it took me a minute. I was a little bit um, not very assertive when I said Gershwin because I had the title of the opera in my mind and I was trying to pull up the title of the composer out of my mind, out of my memory. So, yes. Summertime from Porgy and Bess. Originally composed by George Gershwin for the opera Porgy and Bess, which premiered in 1935. The track is largely regarded as Gershwin's finest work and has seen countless artists cover the track, from iconic performers such as Billie Holiday and Sam Cooke to Ella Fitzgerald and, of course, to Janis Joplin and her band Big Brother and The Holding Company. Joplin's version of the song, which was released in 1968, has a more rock-oriented sound and features her distinctive, powerful vocals. Her interpretation of the song adds a new dimension to the lyrics, imbuing them with a sense of urgency and passion. Well, the summer time that she let out was really fabulous. Janis Joplin's version of Summertime was inspired by her love of blues and soul music. She felt that the original song was too slow and did not capture the essence of the lyrics. Joplin decided to add a more upbeat, rock-oriented sound to the song. Maybe that's why the opening was so hard for me to place, because I, I was feeling like, I know this, I know this. And it was, it was almost Baroque sounding. And that's what was confusing me because it's not Baroque, but it sounds Baroque in that moment. And it was very disorienting, loads of fun. Maybe you should pick out a few more like this and just tease me with them for the fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about about George Gershwin. He was a very interesting composer. He, he, he his music is, is considered very American. Um, of course, he was American and he was a classical composer, but he, he also was a composer of jazz style music and he, he blended the two beautifully. And one of the things that makes him such an American composer is the fact that he uses these American musical traditions and makes them a part of the music that he creates. And, and of course, there are so many of his pieces that are really well known that, and popular. It's a, it's a great example of a, of a classical composer who is able to sound relevant and relatable to the larger popular audience of his time. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and listen to Summertime by George Gershwin, sung and interpreted and rearranged by Janis Joplin. And it's going to be an interesting experience.
Glad she didn't take that any slower, because with the way she really styled it with a blues voice and the the way that she handled it, it would have felt too sluggish. But as it was, oh, she gripped you from the very first note all the way to the end, and it was really incredible. Um, I didn't think of her so much. Of course, I heard the the blues element in her voice and that she could do blues, but I didn't think of her as, as doing a, a complete blues-style song. In fact, remaking a song into blues style before hearing this. But she's obviously a master of it. It's It's really great. It's really great. Um, I would like to go back and talk about some of the details of, of what she's done, where and how. So we're going to back up and listen again, and I'll pause along the way. I'm not going to go over that intro multiple more times because we've already heard it so many times as I was trying to place this. I do want to comment though and say that there's still something about it that I can't 
put my finger on, I still feel like there is some connection with some other piece of music. Baroque, something maybe Bach or it could be some other composer. I don't know if it truly is or if I'm just imagining it. If I'm connecting to something that is maybe similar but not the same thing. I can tell you that that is not Gershwin's original introduction. His introduction, well, his version, the original version of Summertime was f for originally for his opera Porgy and Bess. And, and if you listen to that, it's, it's like, it's a whole lot of atmospheric, lush orchestration, violins and other sounds that are very lush and mellow because he was going for more of the jazz inspired classical sound. And so it's so interesting to me to hear this introduction with a rather spare layout, two separate voices, kind of working in um, contrapuntally to each other, and as well as the drums, a little bit of percussion there um, to create the texture. And then when the voice comes in, it hits you because again, in the original, it was for a classical singer and it was in the classical style, even though it was jazz inspired. And the lines were long and smooth and fluid. And now, now Janice's voice comes in and it sounds more characterful. Well, of course, the other thing we have to remember is that this song was originally a lullaby. And so this setting here that Janice is doing is not trying to be a lullaby. That's why the whole change in character and personality style works. If she were trying to do this as a lullaby, I'm not sure what child would fall asleep to it. It sounds more like a mom or an aunt or a grandma um, reminiscing about childhood days or even that voice to their own child or their own relative who is a child. It has this kind of mm, mother's mother's care quality to it, a, a sort of watchful eye quality, even as it's reveling in the summer, summertime atmosphere and experience. And all of that comes out in this first summer time that she brings in here. Warping there. stop it because it just pulls me into it and and her voice has this quality to it where you don't dare not listen to her 
It's as if you might get in trouble if you're not going to listen to her. I guess that's the that's what makes me feel like there's this mothering quality to it. This this somehow uh, an older, wiser, watchful eye, um, keeping track of all the young uns running around in the dirt outside quality to it. It's it's because her voice doesn't give you permission to not listen. It, it builds a very different image in my mind than the original Gershwin, the original Summertime is so soothing and beautifully legato and it feels more more polished of course this one is rough and raw it's like we can i can taste the dust in my mouth i can i can feel the heat across the field i can i can hear the fish jumping in the stream i can I can feel the fishing line running out of the rod. It's, it's, it, all of it is so visceral and so tangible and, and present. It, it puts the experience in a very homey, um, it's no longer somebody with privilege singing this either. It feels like these are the little kids in some little back road farm that run around barefoot with the hem torn off of their pants because they might not be too poor to own a decent pair of clothes, but but it's summer and nobody cares and that's just the way you do out there. and. sneak an apple off the neighbor's tree and have sticky fingers and and all of this it, to me it all comes through her voice and behind that we still have this very conservative spare minimalistic instrumental background do you think you would have guessed the title if you would have heard her voice in addition to the intro instruments To me, her voice is the entire atmosphere. The, the instruments at the beginning, okay, now that I have it placed, I can see how it fits, but they are not the most evocative part of this. It is her voice. It is her voice and the way she sings this song that makes it come alive. I feel like I'm there, I'm living it. I'm one of the little urchins in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get that sense physically as I hear her sing this. She's looking good now. Hush, baby, 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 baby. No, no, no. I want to take this moment to tell you why this sounds so Baroque to me. So what I say contrapuntal. What do I mean by contrapuntal? It's a word that we classical musicians throw around with ease, but that doesn't mean that everybody else understands it. I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. Counterpoint is a, a term we use it really means point against point, point opposed to point. The idea being the points are the notes, the black dots on the page. And if we look here, I could, I could maybe show you a bit of it. We have these points here 
and they are each their own voice. Dum, bum, bum, bum. You could sing that. It could be its own theme, its own riff, its own melody. Ya da 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 It has its own shape and it it flows its own way. Underneath that, we have an entirely different, independent line. And, and the idea in counterpoint is that each one of those parts is working independently and against the other part. In other words, they're not trying to be in harmony all the time. They're not trying, it's not like we have a melody and a harmony that supports it or follows it. We don't have a melody and something accompaniment wise going. We have two very independent, self-sustaining lines of music. And they are, they are going concurrently. Sometimes they clash a bit. Sometimes they do harmonize. And that is something which is incredibly important in Baroque music. Not only Baroque music, but that was kind of the, the golden age and the height of the attention put towards counterpoint and what it does. Bach's fugues, all of his, all of his great um, works, so much of them have this contrapuntal element. Now, if you want to dig into that some more, you can always check out, let's take something simple, the Bach two-part inventions. You've probably even heard one. Those are all counterpoint. They're exercises in counterpoint. Back to this though. Let's, let's keep going. But that's why this guitar part really makes me think, is it just the style, the contrapuntal style and the tone? Or have I actually heard this? Is it drawn from some work that I should be able to throw off the top of my head, but obviously I'm not linking it any specific place in this moment. <laughs> Then it goes into the melody dum da 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 dum da 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 dum and, and all of that. But as I'm listening to this prelude, interlude, contrapuntal stuff, I'm thinking, actually, I am teaching a prelude and fugue to one of my students right now, which maybe is where part of the inspiration was drawn. I still feel like there's more to it. But but um if you listen to Bach's prelude in C minor. That opening. Maybe that's where part of the inspiration came from. Maybe there's more. Anyway, I like it. Let's keep going.
such a strange mix of of things. Um, the voice, which is its own world. The instruments, which are kind of their own world. And the fact that they are put together and they actually work so well together. It's pretty great. I, I like it. But I'm, I'm still listening to this guitar and the accompaniment and the, the different elements. I'm sure whoever, whoever created this arrangement ha was familiar with box music. I can say that much. There, there had to have been some link. I won't go further than that in my assumptions, but there has to be some link there. You're gonna rise, rise up singing. Don't you love the way her voice rises as she sings that? You're gonna spread your wings. And you hear the wings open. Take to the sky. And launch. Now, this must have been her own insertion here because there weren't that many no's in the original. But again, it works so well. No, 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 no. It there's this rhythm to it and this this intensification of it. It it dances a little bit. It moves. It it plays a little bit and then it burrows in and digs in and and channels us forwards. It's. It's basically a brand new piece of music. It is, it is no longer, it is no longer George Gershwin. This is Janis Joplin and whoever's playing along with her. This is, this is a complete, everything about it is so much their own and has fi their fingerprints all around it. And you could say maybe it was inspired by or drawn from, but you could never say that Gershwin wrote this piece of music. Oh, don't you cry. As I'm coming to the end of this piece of music, I'm remembering another one that I listened to. Well, many of you have told me, as has Vlad, and that a significant number of modern rock pieces are, they borrow from Bach, from other classical musicians, composers. And I know that's true. I mean, I'm thinking of, of Jethro Tull's Bure, which I did some time ago. And the, the way he re, re formatted it, reframed it. And then there's Emerson, Lake and Palmer who did um, pictures at an exhibition. And I know there are some others which I haven't listened to yet, but this one goes a step further. And I guess for that reason, I like this one more than those reformats of the original. This is an original in its own right. As much as box music is original to him, although he borrowed from other contemporaries and and even earlier generations 
of, of composers. That's what is happening here. Janis Joplin and her instrumentalists, her band, have borrowed from Gershwin. They've borrowed from Bach. And who knows where else they've borrowed from? Scarlatti, Vivaldi, who, who knows? Um, and created something out of those bits of borrowing and inspiration that stands on its own, on its own two feet, in its own right. It owns its own world. It is not, it is not a remake of something which came before. Like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's uh, Pictures of an Exhibition, or like Jethro Tull's Boré. This is a completely new piece of music. And I guess I love it. I, I am... I really enjoyed the passion and the, the genuine quality of it. The, I didn't say much about the guitar other than the music the guitar is playing, but I have to say that, that the way it complements her voice and works with her voice and, and the entire band supports and interacts with Janis Joplin, the singer is really great and the end result, the, the final product, is something just incredibly beautiful, breathtaking and and exciting in its own way. It, 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 has, it has that very living quality to it, which I love to find in music. So there is Summertime by Janis Joplin, inspired by George Gershwin, but it's certainly Janis Joplin's summertime. And what a delightful listening experience. Well, we have another one coming up this weekend, so I'll see you soon. <laughs>